thanks everyone for attending today's session. Uh, great to see so many of you here. And um, before we get started, I'm just going to do a few um, technical checks with you just to make sure you, um, you can hear us and see us all okay. You'll see at the bottom of the screen as a raise hand if you can hear me, if you can press the raise hand. Brilliant. Great. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, great. I'm going to lower those and same again, if you can see me, if my camera's working, you can see my colleagues as well. If you could press that button again. Great. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Okay, fantastic. So just to let you know before we get going, if you want to um, communicate with us in any way, if you've got any questions you want to ask, um, just press the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and your questions will come through to us and um, we'll try and answer as many of those as we can. And the second part of this session, we'll be answering those questions. So at any point, if you've got any questions about um, the courses that we're talking about today or <laughs> um, at New Vic in general or um, anything you want to communicate with us, just, just use that Q&A function. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand over um, to Francisco, um, who's going to talk to you uh, firstly about the A-level chemistry course. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laura. So we do OCR chemistry in Newvik. Um, your teachers, as you can see, will be Sherry Ham, myself, um, other members of the department. We have five hours of teaching a week. There are different topics, so we have organic, transition metals, spectroscopy, periodic table, groups, bonding, and structure. So it is an extension of what you do in GCC at a deeper level. The entry requirement is at least a six in the sciences and maths and a five in English. And at the end of the year, you will have two external exams. And if we can go to the next slide. So you have a nice quiz here. A few elements on the screen. Can you take 30 seconds to identify which element is which? Hmm. I think I could get maybe... We'll, we'll check uh, the answers. Five out of the six. Yes, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. Well done. I think so. I think maybe five out of the six. What's number five? That's the one I don't know. Oh, actually, yes. shall, I, shall I try and guess? I've got a few answers coming in. Um, All right. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a go at this. I don't know. Um, so I think the first one is gold. And well the second done. one is here. Is the third one uh, iodine? Very good. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, it is. Great. And then, yeah, I can see as well lots of people getting those right as well. Number four. Yeah, I've got someone here. It's the same as what I was going to guess. Quite a few. Neon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then number five. I have no idea what number five is. I don't know whether maybe any, well, of, uh, any of our students can guess what number five is. Um, I mean, maybe it's a gas. It is a gas. It's actually not very different from number three. It's in the same oh. group. Like a, med med like, um, like a medical thing. No? Well, yes, it could be to some extent be used in the medical field. Not usually. In swimming pools, definitely. You're going to have to give us that. Come on. So so the swimming pool clue, I think, is a good one. Oh, chlorine. Chlorine, yes. And in six, again, lots of people getting this one right, mercury. That's it, perfect. There we go, great. <laughs> that was fun. Well, <laughs> I'm quite impressed with myself. Good. <laughs> so, right. if you want to prepare for, for the course, um, when you finish your GCC course, we would recommend you the CDP Head Start to A-Level Chemistry. And also there are good websites, can guide, can revise. Um, they are completely free and they are very, very good. I'm going to hand over to Sheriha, who will carry on with the chemistry part of the presentation. Oh, it's physics now. 
Yeah, yeah, them. So maybe Sharon, you could just quickly tell us maybe a little bit about um, progression. What kind of courses you can go on to in different careers with chemistry? I think with chemistry, chemistry is one of those bedrock uh, subjects. You can do pretty much anything with a chemistry, especially in terms of the sciences. So if you want to do any scientific course, for example, biomedical science, uh, pharmacology, quite a lot of them require chemistry as a requirement and then another science maybe as additional. So if you generally have chemistry, I think you're, you're, you're on the right track if you want to do any sort of a science degree. Uh, you can move on to medicine. Chemistry, again, is a requirement for that. Uh, you could do pharmacy. Um, loads and loads of different types of subjects you want to do because it requires quite a lot of analysis and it requires a lot of scientific information. So universities really, really appreciate chemistry as a subject. Even if you do what decide to move on to something else like engineering or, or something completely different, having an A-level in chemistry will put you in good stead. Um, so yeah, so it w specifically what subjects, I can't tell you, but majority of them, if you're thinking some sort of science related field, you could get in with a good grade in chemistry at A-level. Great, thanks, Shohan. Okay, so Marcel, over to you. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the Physics A-level? Yes, well, the Physics A-level is split in the first year. Um, we study the AS portion, and that covers practical skills, the foundations of physics, forces and motions, and a bit on waves and photons. In the second year we look at astrophysics, cosmology um, and the, they describe it as a Newtonian world as well and we end off with particle physics and medical physics so there's an emphasis on medical physics in the final year. Uh, the exam board we're doing is OCR currently um, in the first year, you also have an opportunity um, to do some real research with a fairly local university, Queen Mary College. Um, last year, for example, a group of students looked at muons, which are formed from cosmic rays, which bombard the upper atmosphere. And they spent six months researching about this and um, then gave a presentation in competition with other schools and in fact won a prize for their presentation so that's a real opportunity and something which is good to put on a UCAS application um, if you uh, are applying or you, or you want to go to university afterwards so there's opportunity to do that as well um, can we go back a slide please yeah I think you're going forward. So that's basically the course outline um, in terms of um, content, as is on that slide, in fact, what I was just saying. So four 70-minute lessons per week. Um, currently, half of those are in the college and half of them are online, but we'll see what happens with the COVID situation as to what happens next term or next year. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to progress, next slide, please. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to move on to the Q&A because we've got lots of questions coming in from students. So we've only got sort of 15 minutes left. So is there something you could maybe wrap up, Marcel, maybe about talking about um, career and progression, about, um, and then with the quiz that you've put together, I'll send that out in an email to everyone who's attended. And then we'll okay, good. If you, just, if you just go back one slide, please, and I'll answer that question before we get to Q&A. This one? No, nope. next one. This one? This book is, so in terms of, well, that'll do. The previous slide was a recommendation on what, if you want a preparation, I don't recommend, in fact, that you look at any of these things like revision guides or stuff like that. I would recommend that you actually read a book like this, which will hopefully stir your interest in the subject. Um, and this is, for example, Richard Feynman, who was what, one of the greatest physicists. And this is what I would recommend that you look at, something off the beaten track, as it were. As for careers, on the next slide, 
This one? The next one, yeah, and the next one along. Yep. This one? This yeah, one. that's fine. Quiz, this is going to many, oh. Physics is going to many um, fields and they are sought after. Um, so there's the obvious science fields, anything related to science or engineering. But also, uh, like myself, I spent 15 years in finance and there are lots of physicists actually working in areas in finance, if that's what you like, or data analysis as well. So the skills that you tend to gain from a subject like physics are widely um, sought after in many, many fields other than a science field. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks Marcel. Okay, so I'm gonna to move to the Q&A because I've got lots of questions coming in and we wanna try and answer as many of these as we can. Oh, mm -hmm. that's the wrong one. So, um, so questions here about, let me scroll down, I just saw. Um, so asking about um, exams, you do exams for all of the subjects, all of these, how, how are the exams, how many exams are there? Um, for the A-level chemistry, we have exams at the end of the first year um, and we've got two exams. Uh, one is breadth and one is depth uh, and that will be based on the whole content that you study for that first year. And you also have a practical endorsement. Uh, so you get a grade at the end of the two years, generally where it says pass or fail, and that will be based on a series of practicals that we do during the lessons, um, which universities quite appreciate now, knowing that you have the experience of all these practicals. But there's two exams at the end of the first year. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So um, is the AQA A-level chemistry course more academic than the OCR exam board? Someone's done some research. Oh, Francisco, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. I would say they are different. AQA, it's maybe broader. You will learn more reactions and more knowledge, but OCI is deeper. So you learn less content. Your application of the knowledge has to be a little bit sharper. Okay, so it's a bit more specific in what you learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Okay, so asking for recommendations for degrees. So um, somebody wants here who wants to study um, optometry. Um, could you give us a, a good, what would be some good courses to get onto a degree such as optometry? So anyone want to take that? I would say, to be honest with you, best thing to do best thing to do is to check on the website yeah. because each course each university has different requirements yeah, so, so UCAS, if, yeah go on UCAS and have a look at the specific universities that you're interested in and what topics or are their prerequisites i would say maths and chemistry would make sense i'm not sure if biology would be a requirement in optometry but yeah, definitely, yeah, what Fran said, definitely have a look at the universities that you're interested in. So the Russell Group ones and see what their requirements are. I mean, I think that's the thing with, um, with A-levels, isn't it? With, if you do some, like to get onto kind of like any kind of medical courses to doing like, like science and maths A-levels will, will open up doors to lots of different courses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, look at the, um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Look at the UCAS website. I also um, want to just point out that um, also if you go to our website on the course pages on our website and we've also got like a little function on there where you can like look at combinations of degrees and combinations of A-levels, what kind of degrees you can get. It's, it's a really good tool on our website um, which will help give you some inspiration for that as well as looking at the UCAS website. Um, okay, so um, back to the questions. Um, what kind of practical activities do you do during um, these courses? There's loads. Um, there's, there's a lot of different practical activities. Francisco, what kind of practical well, activities? We, yes, yeah, so we do synthesis of compounds. So for example, a classic A-level practical is to synthesize aspirin which is very nice. Yeah. You, you see a lot of techniques and you can see the application of the practical itself. 
uh, we do analytical experiments to find out which chemicals are in a sample of water, in a sample of um, powder, anything that you could find, let's say in a crime scene on a different planet, chemists will analyze it and we learn the foundations of those uh, pieces of analysis. We do um, equilibrium energetics reactions with experiments. Yeah. Every topic has got a set of practicals. Yeah, and, they, and they're quite embedded in the in the units that we teach or the topics that we teach. So we are generally doing quite a lot of practicals every other lesson or every two lessons. We do have some sort of a practical booked in, uh, so that the students can not just read about it, but be aware of it and be able to do it themselves. So there are a lot of different practicals, some super fun ones like aspirin and paracetamol and caffeine and, and some not so interesting ones, but there are a lot of practicals booked in. So you will be professionals by the end. Great, thanks guys. Okay, so question here about entry requirements. What does it mean by getting a 6-6 in science? You'd have to get a 6-6 in science. I think they're talking about the double award, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so when you when you do your GCSEs, you usually you get two awards uh, for the science grades, and you would not just need the six six for the science, but you need to get six point zero average amongst all your subjects, um, and then a six in the English and a six in the maths. It's it's a lot of maths content and there's a lot of English content, um, so it is a requirement for the subject. We want you to do well, and if you haven't achieved the grades, there would be no point in us putting you in a subject that you're not going to achieve the best in. And I mean, I guess this question is related to that. There's someone here asking, um, can they do a level for physics if they get a grade five? Is that a grade five in maths? Um, it's, I, I'm guessing, can you, get, is it, can you get it with a grade five in maths? No, you, you, want, you want, ideally you should have a minimum of grade six in maths, I would say. Although there's not heavy maths content in, physics for example you wouldn't need to do a level physics oh sorry a level maths to do physics but you want to be i would say seven to feel comfortable with it and what about in science again you'd need the six in science or the six six in science for physics yeah yeah i would say so six six at a minimum ideally seven okay great um how are the classes set up? So this is a question. So it says, um, how are the classes set up? Is it like a secondary classroom? Are they university style lectures? So, I mean, I guess like, how is the teaching um, of these courses? How is it similar to school? And also how is it different from school? And how do you prepare, how does the way we teach the courses prepare students for university? I think the classroom setup is a combination of the two. Um, so you have teaching, but you have a lot of student-led activities uh, still in the chemistry course so we are going to give you work to do we'll explain something to a high level but you'll have worksheets to do and we're constantly supporting you with support lessons towards the end of the year and we're kind of keeping tabs on you and making sure that you are aware of what you're doing there's homework and there's prep at the end of every lesson so that you're getting yourself ready for the next lesson uh, so in terms of that it's a combination of school and it's a combination of university uh, because at university, it's a lot more student-led in terms of it's independent. Uh, you have the lectures, and then it's your responsibility to then go out and do your research and, and to do your reading and so on. So we have that at A-level where if you want to get ahead of everybody else and you want to get yourself an A-star or whatever it is at your grades, you must put in quite a lot of independent work. Um, so yeah, so it, it's a combination and it does prepare you for university. Great, thanks Johan. Um, a question here, can um, physics be done as it own, on its own or do you have to also study chemistry as well as physics? No, there's no requirement for anyone who doesn't like chemistry to have to do chemistry because, of, because they love physics. So you can do physics without any other science. Great, thanks Marcel. Um, so a question here, someone wants to get in and um, become a cardiologist. What kind of courses would you recommend for that? 
again, I, don't, I think at this level, unless a university has a specific requirement, which I can't think of any, to be honest, um, I would say that you should do those A-levels that you most enjoy doing. Um, clearly, if you want to do something medicine related, it should be relevant. So doing, I don't know, sociology, history and um, politics wouldn't help you get into medicine, medical school. So, so provided it's a science well, uh, relevant to a medical field, then that, that would be fine, I would say. Great. Well, you, you great advice. Sorry? There's some great advice, Marcel, studying subjects that you enjoy, unless mm. there's something very specific that you, that you need. Mm. Um, okay. So, again, lots of questions about... So, oh, are any of these BTEC? Well, we're talking about A-levels, so there are, there are, there are BTEC courses at NUVEC. Yeah, uh, but these are all A-level courses. There is a BTEC science, um, biomedical science, um, biomedical which science. I think, I think yeah. it might have already been on earlier today. So in that case, you can check out the website and watch the video back of the biomedical science. So that's the only um, BTEC that we do. But yeah, these are all A-level courses. Um, okay, so um, lots of questions about, ah, so here, lots of questions about um, students wanting to get into medicine. So what would you, be your advice for students wanting to, to get onto a medical degree? Biology and chemistry and one other. Okay. Maybe Great. also to look into relevant work experience. Right, and is that a requirement? It is a requirement and they need to work for that um, either independently or, well, they, they need to manage to have good work experience. Okay, great. Thanks. So, um, again, could, about the kind of topic that you talked about, I know, um, I know you sort of mentioned at the, at the top, but um, could you maybe just go again again about um, the different kinds of topics that you study on the courses, on um, the physics course, for instance? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, shall I bring it up? Specifically, so in the first year, we study the AS course, and I will bring it so I can tell you exactly what it is. All right, so in the first year, we do various practical skills, foundations in physics, which is um, just a kind of a, a lot of that is GCSE, to be honest. We look at forces and motion, which is uh, fairly detailed, electrons, waves, and photons. That's the first year. In the second year, we look at astrophysics, in some detail and particle physics and relevant to the previous question we specialize us i would say in medical physics so the physics course spends um, a fair amount of time uh, a month or so looking at medical physics so people in interest in medicine or radiography or something like that that may be of interest to them so that's in the second year. Great, thanks, Marcel. Okay, we've got a question here, and um, talking about more generally about course combinations. Um, so it, just asking, like, how how do combinations work? Like, do you do three A levels? Um, do you do a B tech with A levels? Um, could you just maybe just give us a kind of overview of um, the different course combinations and options students can choose at NUVIC? Typically it's A-level or, I would say, so typically three A-levels is what people would do. Yeah. Um, Universities require three A-levels. We don't encourage people to, to do any more than that because these three A-levels require quite a lot of time and effort already. Um, I think if you get above a 7.0 average, I think at that point you're allowed to take another A-level. Um, I think they are the only exceptions. Uh, so generally, it's three A levels, or if you wanted to do some sort of a B tech combination, it would be. 
it would be two A levels with a with a B tech or a yeah, it would be something like that. But that would it would be based on the student and it would be based on their grades and and their future career aspirations and all that. So just to um, just to continue from what Sherham was just saying, we do do two different types of BTECs at Nuvic. So what she was um, describing then as doing the BTECs in combination with A levels, they're what we call subsidiary diplomas. So again. When you go to our website, we class them in the same group as A-levels because you can take a combination of those subjects, but they are actually technically um, a vocational um, BTEC qualification, but it's equivalent to one A-level. So, um, for instance, the criminology course is um, a subsidiary diploma and that's a BTEC course. Um, and you can take that in combination with two other A-levels. So, again, we call them subsidiary diplomas and you'll find them grouped with the A-levels and subsidiary diplomas um, on our website. And then the other kind of BTECs that we do are the extended diplomas. So these, um, you would just choose one extended diploma and that's um, equivalent to kind of three A-levels. So it, it would be your whole program. So you wouldn't be able to take an extended diploma in combination with A-levels. So um, I think I'm right in saying that. Um, you guys can back yeah. me up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, great. I hope that's clarifying things for everyone. So we are coming up to the end of this session. Um, again, lots and lots of questions about course combinations. So I'm just going to, um, again, have a look on our website. Have a look. If you go to the core, individual course pages, again, there's um, use that tool at the bottom to get some ideas of different combinations of courses and what those, what, um, those combinations, um, different careers that they can lead to as well. That's a really good thing and particularly now when you're doing your research figuring out your options it's a really good tool to have a look at and again as Francisco and Shohan were saying like having a look at the UCAS website also prospects.ac.uk is a really is another good website to have a look if you're exploring careers and um, that kind of thing so um, we're gonna have to leave it there for today and I'm really sorry we haven't got around to answering all of your questions um, what I'm going to do, um, I mean, I, which I've said in other sessions, I'm going to download all of the questions that you've sent in and we'll, we'll write up responses to each of those and um, I'll email um, them to you after this session um, next week. Um, I'll also publish the questions on the website. Um, again, there's a couple of you I can see in the, in the chat um, saying you've missed the first half. Don't worry, this session has been recorded. And again, I'm going to post that video on the website so you can play it back. Um, so just a final word from me just to let you know that um, the application for September 2021 is now open. So um, if you want to get your application in early, um, go to our website and um, uh, you can complete an application there. Um, similarly, if you've got any questions about um, options and you want some advice on um, uh, you know, what, what you want to choose, um, if you contact our advice and recruitment team, um, they're really good um, at answer, uh, giving really good um, impartial um, advice and guidance on um, options. And they know a lot more sort of about a broad range of subjects as well. Um, and, um, you know, um, requirements for different kinds of universities and things like that. So you can email them um, on that number. You can also phone them. The telephone number is uh, um, extension is, uh, I think it's extension three for advice and recruitment. Um, again, also, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact um, us, um, the marketing team at the marketing email, which you'll have from registering for this session. And we, again, we can forward that through to the right people to answer that. So um, just want to thank everyone for coming and um, thanks um, for you guys for taking part. And uh, I hope this has been a helpful session for you all and um, look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.